In this uh, video, we will be discussing uh, the types of natural selection. Now to understand what exactly we mean here is basically in which way the nature selects. So that is what would come under the types. The first type of natural selection is known as stabilizing natural selection. Stabilizing or balancing natural selection. That means in this, the nature is going to select in order to balance the population and the nature selects the intermediate and eliminates the extreme situations or extreme conditions. So elimination of extremes. This is how a stable kind of population is selected by the nature. The example that we take to understand the stabilizing type of or balancing type of natural selection is of sickle cell anemia. We have discussed that there are three possible situations when uh, a person has sickle cell anemia. One is a normal condition, one is a carrier condition and the third where both the alleles are recessive. That is HBA, HBA, this is absolutely normal. The next situation is HBA and HBS which we call the carriers and the third where both the alleles are diseased or they would result into formation of sickle uh, shaped RBCs and defective hemoglobin. We have already discussed that biologically or theoretically this type of genotype is the perfect but as the nature selects the most suitable it selects these organisms because this situation exists in an area where malaria is a predominant uh, kind of uh, disease. So these normal individuals get affected. The homozygous recessive, they die at an early age and these are selected. So if we plot a graph originally, the graph is normally like this, in which these two ends show the extremes. That means here it will be HBA, HBA. The middle is HBA and HBS, that is heterozygous condition. And this would be HBS, HBS. And as the natural selection picks more and more of intermediate, that means it would pick the uh, heterozygous condition. And it eliminates the extremes. So this extreme also gets eliminated because um, they get infected by malarial parasite. This extreme also gets eliminated because this is the one which is actually having the maximum problem and they do not survive. So after some time when the nature selects, this graph changes and the shape of this graph would be something like this. The extremes are still there, but as we can see here, the number of extremes has gone very, very low. So this would be our HBA, HBA. very less number and this would anyways would come to an end or we can say this is like in early stage those organisms which are surviving and this middle part is the maximum number of individuals which are able to survive. So nature has selected HBA, HBS because this is the most suitable condition for that particular area or region. So by selecting the intermediate types and eliminating the extremes, the nature has selected these individuals and we have given it a term as stabilizing or balancing type of natural selection. So this is one type. The second type of natural selection that we talk of is called
प्रोग्रेसिव और डिरेक्शनल डिरेक्शनल और प्रोग्रेसिव नेचुरल सिलेक्शन इन दिस द नेचर सिलेक्ट द मोस्ट एडेप्टेड वन इन दैट सिचुएशन सो मोस्ट एडेप्टेड आर सिलेक्टेड एंड इट मूव इन अ डिरेक्शन दैट मीन्स इट इज गोइंग टू शिफ्ट फ्रॉम वन साइड टू अनर द एग्जाम्पल दैट वी कैन टेक हियर इज ऑफ इंडस्ट्रियल मिलानिज्म or even of ddt resistance in mosquitoes so ddt resistance in mosquitoes any of these two examples would help us understand this we know that in a given situation suppose we start with the experimental situation where uh, if we talk of industrial melanism both the types of moths that is the gray one Biston betularia and the black one that is Biston carbonaria both are present in any situation and we are taking the example of same industrial melanism originally when there was no industrialization in England the graph was like this the graph was the maximum population was of the grey colored moth so this extreme was the black moth and this maximum was of the gray colored moth so this number was of gray moths when the conditions changed this graph it shifted and how did it shift the same thing but it started to appear like this the number of black it became maximum so this was all the black and the number of the gray moths it became very very less that means this area was growing towards one direction so this can be the example to understand directional or progressive it is moving in a particular direction so originally the black moths were less and later on when the conditions changed their number this is for the black one so their number became more and these gray ones they were extremely less so it was moving in a direction and in this situation the gray ones were more suited in this situation that is this is before industrialization and this is after industrialization the situation has changed that means the number of organisms changed and the most adapted in that situation was the one which was picked up by the nature so these two are the examples to understand directional or progressive the third type of natural selection is known as disruptive so let us discuss the third type now the third type is known as disrupted natural selection now interestingly in this one the nature selects the extremes selects the extremes and eliminates the intermediate type now to understand this the example that we take is of snails which are found at the sea bed and these snails they exist in three colors white brown and black and if we talk of the genotype the black has homozygous dominant the white has homozygous recessive and the brown is heterozygous 
So one extreme is black, other extreme is white and the intermediate is brown. Originally, suppose we talk about a number which is a normal situation that there are three organisms and normally the intermediates are here and say their number is pretty much same. So this is intermediate, these are black and these are white. Now the nature is selecting the extremes and there has to be a reason why nature is selecting the extremes. The reason is that the sand which is at the seabed is not brown sand, it is white sand. Plus, it is also covered with barnacles. So, sand is white and covered with barnacles. Normally, when we see the seashore or uh, near the rivers, the sand is normally brown. But at the seabed, the sand is white. And that is why these white snails were able to blend in that white background. The snails which were on the rocks, they were black. And because the rock is also black, they were also able to blend. So could blend these ones, the black ones, could blend on black rocks. The snails which were prominently seen or easily detected were the brown ones because on the white background also these brown were seen and on the black background also these white were seen. That means this was intermediate was not the most suited. The black and the white that means the extremes were suited or more suitable in those conditions. So their population increased and the graph became like this. So this was the population of black and this, this middle line or the depression which we see is of the intermediate that is the brown ones and again because white were able to survive their number also increased. So here the nature has selected the extremes because they were most suitable. In all three examples, whether it is uh, the first one that is balancing type, the second one that is the progressive or directional type or this one. The underlying thing is that the nature selects the most uh, adapted or the suitable organism for that condition. But depending upon which category is selected, either is, whether it is the intermediate one which is selected or the extreme selected, that gives us these three types of natural selections. So in this case, extremes are selected, whereas the intermediate one is not the best suited one and that is why they get killed and their number is decreasing. So we get a graph which shows two peaks at the two extremes where the intermediate number is less. So these are the three types of natural selections.